started working in Hollywood in her teens and became Pakistan's youngest and first visual effect artist, Lareb Atta. Her latest projects include 007 No Time to Die, Fast and Furious, Tenant that won the Oscar and BAFTA, and Marvel show Wanda's Vision. I'm sure this is already giving you goosebumps. So how is Lareb taking Hollywood by a storm? So um, can you please tell me about your childhood? Where were you born? Uh, what was your early education? So basically I was born in Lahore. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure you must have heard about my father, legendary Atta Mullah yes. Khan Isa Khelvi. Yes, he, he comes from uh, the town uh, Isa Khel, uh, Miawali. Right. So I was I was born I was born in Lahore, and then most of our childhood was spent in Isakhel, and with my relatives, my 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 granddad, my grandmother. Um, uh, due to my upbringing, uh, upbringing, I was a very shy, reserved, and quiet yeah. kind of personality and word. And you know, my father had very strict rules, so I wasn't allowed to socialize, or I wasn't allowed to get out too much. So I was apart from the school, I would spend most of my time at home. So I, I sort of got used to it because I, I used to just stay in my corner. I loved reading books. I loved drawing. I loved art and design. And I, I watched anime features a lot, animated movies. So I think I discovered my passion in art and design from there as well because I, I found out I'm really good at art and drawing. And I watched, when I was young, I watched uh, Toy Story. Right. When I think I was... I was nine or something, Pixar's Toy Story, and that is when I was like, I am absolutely in love. I was absolutely in love with the animation, the storyline, the way the storytelling was being. So it was, uh, yes, it was about that age I started to look more into anime features and got so intrigued by the animation and how it was done. But I didn't know back then I was going to get into visual effects because visual effects is so niche and unknown to... Uh, to us, even in the, in the universities or in the schools, we don't get these options very uh, common, right. commonly, uh, you know. So I was, I was when I was 14, that was when we moved to the UK. I moved to London when I was 14. Uh, so you go, and then, did you go with your family? Yes. So it was my brother first moved to the UK by himself because he wanted to continue his education in the UK. Right. Uh, uh, his career and stuff and then I think after two years after that me and my mother and my younger brother we moved to the UK right uh, my dad always stayed in Pakistan because of his profession he was always traveling he was always he wanted to have Pakistan his base and he didn't want to he didn't really want to leave Pakistan right so uh, so yeah me and my mother and my brothers we moved to the UK and I did my GCSEs and my A-levels and after my A-levels I took a gap year. Yeah. Uh, during, I took a gap. I already had a place in my in the university for civil engineering and architecture. Yes. But I wasn't sure if I wanted to do engineering. So I took a I took a gap year and I think it was then during the gap year one day my brother you might have heard of him Samali Sahelvi he's a musician himself. Yeah. Back then he was he was an aspiring artist and he was like, Larry, what if you work on my music videos one day in the future? That will be amazing, like as a, as a VFX, a visual, visual artist. And that was the moment for me. I was like, oh my God, that's amazing. That sounds brilliant. So I started searching online about visual effects and I came across this very amazing school uh, based in London called Escape Studios. Right. And I came across it and they were doing... They, they, their training was very well received and they were connected to many big studios in London. So I, I straight away applied for the course and I got accepted. Right. And I was, I was uh, 18, 19 back then when I, when I started VF, I went into the class. I was the only girl out of like 13 students. Everyone else was like, um, uh, men and old, they still had some background in VFX, they still had some experience, they still had some skill set and knowledge, whereas I had zero knowledge about VFX, I didn't know about 2D and 3D, I, I was the only girl there, I was the youngest, right. <laughs> probably, and of course, and again, of course, the only Pakistani, because 
there's hardly any Pakistani I've come across in this field in in the West. Okay. So, but that did not bother me. I was so focused and I was so determined that to do my best to give my hundred percent. It and it was really intense course. It was a five six months very interactive and intense course we had professionals as tutors they were already working in the professional industry on big projects and for me that was such an exciting moment that i was part of this and i was learning these amazing tools and amazing softwares so for me that really kept me going right and once i finished once i finished my five six months course one of the recruiters there she approached me she saw how hard working I was, how determined I was, and she was like, "Lara, we are sending out freelance, freelancers, freelancing artists uh, as a VFX junior roles. If you are interested, I can put your name forward, and I can send you out to companies." And that's when I started working professionally at the age of 19. I was, I was. Some of my first projects were Disney commercials. Whoa! I'm still a big fan of Disney. I think probably more than my toddler. So what was your first project like with Disney? It was a bit of commercials, like uh, some of the Disney commercials they were doing uh, like items and small promos for their uh, Disney products. So they they were going uh, on big TV channels. And in the same companies, we had this um, album promo covers uh, done for George Michael, um, Rolling Stone and a few other artists I can't I can't remember right now. Mm-hmm. And then from from that instantly I was offered film film projects like Ten Thousand BC, uh, Chronicles of Narnia, um, Sweeney Todd of Johnny Johnny Depp. That's that's all in my I'm DVD. So I instantly went into some of the big projects. Uh, back then I was really like 19. Um, but then after I was working on those projects, I, I, I had to, I, there were some family issues, some personal problems, which is why I had to like not continue. And I gave up some job offers. I had a gap in my career. Uh, of course, I, there were a lot of cultural, social barriers I had to face, problems in the family as well. My dad wasn't entirely happy of me working. He, for him, it was like, a woman should be at home or should be married and should be looking after kids at this young age or, you know, at that age. That's the vision he had. Uh, but I wasn't really completely satisfied. But then to respect him, I did give up a few jobs. Um, I didn't continuously work. I got married as well, very young age, around 24. Uh, I became mom as well, very young. So I had a good five, six years uh, of gap in my career. Um, but I had some amazing CV by then. I had worked on some of the good, great projects by then. Um, but once, once I had this long gap in my career, I moved to Spain, I moved to Barcelona, and then I came back to London, really wanted to get back into the VFX industry. I was so determined, and then, and then I came back, and I've been four years with a company called DNEG. I've worked at DNEG now, it's been four years. They won Oscars for projects like Interstellar, Blade Runner, Inception, uh, First Man. I I was I was lucky enough to be on projects like uh, Altered Carbon for Netflix. My recent one was Mission Impossible Fallout. Uh, I just finished working on 007 or Time to Die, Fast and Furious. And recent one was Christopher Nolan's Tenet which I'm a big fan of sci-fi. I'm a big fan of Christopher Nolan. And I was really, really privileged to, I was really lucky to be on that project as well. So yeah, this is like, in a small, in a nutshell, this is my story. (laughs) As a woman belonging to Isa Hill town in Punjab province of Pakistan, and then going into Hollywood is breaking some major cultural barriers. Lare, how did you get the strength and courage to be a trailblazer? Uh, for me, my personal struggles were really the mental barriers I had to break through. Being from a very conservative family background, having a, a very strict upbringing. And even though they, it did make me very strong and molded me, my personality became today what I am because of that as well. Because of, you know, how 
my my parents brought me up, but at the end, it did kind of brought some, uh, um, like I struggled a lot with my confidence at the beginning. How to reach out to people? How to be? Because uh, I used to be called mute. That's how quiet I used to be. People used to call me mute. I wouldn't say anything. I would just stay in my own zone, in my own in my own self and I also got into meditation from a young age I think it made me a very focused person but at the same time it brought struggles as well how can I break into a very male dominated you know industry yes. so for me one best thing that really happened was I became so focused from a young age I think I started I I realized that from a young age I knew what I wanted and for me, it was like a do or die situation. For me, I already had developed such a thick skin even before I stepped into the industry that, you know, my upbringing made me so strong that going into an industry which was male dominated and I saw all men around me who were old and they were skillful and I, on the other hand, had zero experience. I still, I knew this is my chance. This is the only opportunity I have and I will give my 100%. And see where it takes me, and with you know, with a lot of hard work and determination, I managed to make it into the into the professional field. So really, it was about the mental barriers I had to break down, how to communicate, how to lead teams, and still I get anxiety. I still have really bad anxiety in, to talk in front of people, but I'm really breaking through that. Even I got into public speaking. And the reason I got into public spe speaking is because I know there are so many other girls, young girls and, and women out there who would like to know my story, who would like to see how I've made it this far. So to give them hope as well and to give them a direction as well, I really push myself to get into public speaking. So maybe just to see if I can help other people out there. Now that you have the title of youngest and Pakistan's first visual effect artist, and have worked in some of the Hollywood's blockbuster movies. How does it make you feel about your achievements? I, when I started, I was young, yes. <laughs> now I'm 33. When yeah. I started, I was 19. Mm -hmm. um, you know, it's, it's, inc it's incredible. It's, it's, it is definitely an honor to have that title. Mm -hmm. And that's what I want to just bring up to people. And I want to show them this is possible if you have the will and power to do it. Nothing, nothing, nothing can stop you. Even even where I've come from, my background, my upbringing did not stop me. And to acknowledge that there are so very few women, and being a mother as well, there are hardly any working mother in this industry. And being a person of color, being a Pakistani Muslim, being a, being a woman, this, I feel like this is an achievement. I, that's what really pushes me and keeps me going. And you know, and bring and bring a change really into this industry and in, into the narrative of, of this industry as well, because I know there's a lot that needs to be fixed okay. within this field. Yeah. You got married at the age of 24 and took a five years break from your career. What happened that led you to rejoin the industry? Did your father consent? Did he warm up to the idea? What happened? When I was having, when I got married, had a family and my, my son was born, I pretty much thought that my family is important. If I have to stick to become a full-time mother, I might just take that and give up. I wanted to get back into VFX, but my family was the priority. I wanted to see if I will get into VFX or not at that time, but my family was important at that time. But what happened was, Due to some family problems, my 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 parents are separate. This is what I struggled to get into deep, like deep into the family issues and problems I've faced. My mom was alone in back uh, in London. She was living alone. She was kind of sort of a bit depressed as well, and she had some visa and immigration problems, where uh, dad being separate with her, my mother at the end had a notice given by home office immigration that you've got 10 days and you need to leave the country so she was ordered to go back to pakistan within 10 days when i was in spain so that was the moment i thought oh my god i need to go back and i need to help my mother 
So I moved back to the London and I started looking for work just to prove to the home office that my mother is alone and she has no one to go back to. So that's when I started to get back uh, into the work field again. I started looking for jobs just to prove for a whole year that she is dependent on me. So there's no way she can go back to Pakistan. So it was more like a will to help my mother that got me back into the industry, <laughs> that got me back into my uh, into my VFX career. But before that, for me, I was just looking at options. Should I choose going back to VFX or not? Or should I choose my career? That was pretty much still, I was open to that. I wasn't really, uh, I was determined to get back into VFX, but I didn't know when was the right time to do it. Uh, so that for me was the right time to come back, help my mother, and now she's stable, she's a resident, and I've moved here with my family, I'm looking after my son as well. And for the last four years, it's just been incredible. For the last four years, I had the opportunity to talk at TEDx, I was featured on BBC, I was featured on Sky News, I was featured, I was um, invited to Silicon Valley at Netflix headquarters to represent women and uh, people of color and minorities in this industry. I, I was uh, um, invited to a Toronto VES event. I, and last year I got nominated for VES award as well for my work on Altered Carbon Netflix show. So this four years has been so rewarding and incredible, which I, I did not even expect and it happened. As a woman of color, did you face trouble in the industry which is largely dominated by white people? I tend to ignore my surroundings. I realized that at the age when I started, when I stepped into the industry, one thing was so powerful for me that I did not worry about the surroundings. I did not worry about who I'm surrounded by. I knew what I have and I need to work with what, I, what, what I've got right now with me. So I've always been so focused. And there's one thing that really, uh, the, the funny thing happened recently at work. One of my supervisor, again, he's, a, he's Italian, he's a, he's, a, he's a male. And one day he came up to me and said, Laurie, I really need to apologize to you. And I, I said, well, what is it? He goes, I, I said something in the room the other day. I've, I, I've been thinking about it. I said something really offensive. I hope you didn't mind that. And I was like, what? I, I did not hear anything at all. What are you talking about? So it was a really surprising for me. He mentioned something and I didn't even hear it. What I, he, he at the end was like, okay, it's good you didn't hear it because I, I thought if for a few days it really bothered me that I said something in the room to some people and you might have heard it and you might have found it offensive uh, <laughs> yeah at the end i sort of like laughed at it well i'm sorry i didn't hear it because i just tend to ignore the irrelevant arguments that are happening around me i just tend to always focus on what i am doing and i do not just get into irrelevant arguments or irrelevant co uh, conversations so i sort of like this is one thing I started to think about. Am I just absolutely ignoring what's happening around me and just really so focused on my work that I don't even feel like I'm being discriminated at work or feeling any sort of, you know, uh, any uh, finding it hard for myself. But I hear for so, so many women from so many people, their side of stories that they still feel so discriminated and they still feel, face so much racism. And I know that is a problem that needs to be fixed. What will you choose? You believe that you did not face discrimination because you were lucky or you did not pay attention to it? To be honest, it could be both because, yes, I've worked with some amazing people and I always speak so highly about them, especially in the company I work for right now. I've come across some of the best people in this industry who have helped me, uh, helped me grow, helped me come out of my shell, helped me come, uh, given me some amazing tasks, believed in me and encouraged me to get into leading and stuff. But at the same time, there were there could be politics around there. There could be things happening around in the production, which I just always don't tend to get into or dwell into because that sort of things. I'm an artist. I really love my work. I'm here for the work. I'm here for the job. And this is what I, I want to just deliver the best I can oh. at the end. Oh. I, you mentioned that over the years you have come out of your shell. Do you think this transition happened because of the success and fame that came with your career? Or did you start appreciating yourself more? 
I think the success definitely helped me to get out of my shell in even more because I my I remember the first uh, public speaking event I was invited to for the TEDx I was completely losing my head I was like I don't think I can do this because this is like a big thing for me to go and speak in front of people and that too about so many personal things that are hardly speak to even my close friends about so for me to go on such a big platform and talk about my personal journey was so was so daunting was so scary i thought i can't do this but then at the at the, at the same time my husband was like this is this is one of the lifetime opportunities i think you need to put yourself out there think about all the young girls think about all the women who are out there who would look up to that image of yours and learn from you and have and find hope and uh, you know find a light at the end of the tunnel that this is possible if this woman can do and get this far why can't we do the same so for me that really pushed me that because my will to i always believe that there there's no excuse as a path breaker you have inspired many around you what is your message for women and young girls I really uh I really because I'm a mentor as well I always tell my mentees that it's so important specifically when they ask me about the industry how do we get in I can specifically tell them the ways to get in how to improve their show reels how to reach out to people how networking is important but as a whole for youngsters I think it's so important for you to connect with yourself to understand what you like what you want in life what makes you happy define success and happiness for yourself understand what happiness and success mean to you because we as a woman in in our culture we are so like we face so many social barriers so many cultural problems so much pressure so many expectations that even for men if we get so lost we get so lost in making others happy that we forget ourselves we don't understand what what makes us happy what is important to us so find yourself what you like and then for as well for the parents i think it's so important for them to understand their children or their young, you know kids what to give them the tools and give them the freedom to try everything and find themselves what they want to do in life so i think it's so important to define success and happiness for yourself then only then from from yourself when you're happy you will start making people around you happy and when you help yourself and you're stronger you're going to make other people around you happy and stronger as well and that grows from you to your neighbors to the communities and to the nations so it's so important that you know yourself first and then get out there and reach it just it's it's a very that's my own experience because i've done it I faced it from a very young age from my, within my own community where they told me you're a woman you can't do this and you can't do that I was never satisfied with that answer because I could see men doing everything and then women on the other hand completely isolated and not being able to do what they want to do so for me I was never satisfied so I wanted to go out on my own and find and discover is it really true that as a woman I can't do this without disrespecting anyone without going against anyone I wanted to just find it out on my own and and I think I have has your father made peace with the fact that you are working Oh yes absolutely he's so proud of me right now he's he speaks so highly of me even because he's even when he's sitting with Imran Khan the prime minister he talks about me and that for me is like an achievement to see my dad happy to speak so highly of me I think that for me is like one of the biggest achievements to 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 for him to approve that and he's really proud and he and and I can't really ask for more <laughs> yes thank you lari pata the first pakistani visual effect artist